Alexa, welcome to the office again. We're here for plastic surgery and we're going to discuss with you your upcoming surgery. Yes. So what we're gonna be doing is breast augmentation and we're going to be using a silicone implant. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be placing it underneath the muscle. Yep. We are going to access the breast through an incision underneath the breast. And when we typically talk about uh, incision placements, we typically will go underneath the breast or underneath the nipple. And in you, we chose to go underneath the breast to give it uh, the best aesthetic appearance mm -hmm. and also to help conceal uh, the incision as much as possible. And then the last is we're going to be using uh, the biodimensional planning to choose the size to fit your body perfectly. So mm -hmm. that it's not too narrow, it's not too wide, it looks pretty and appropriate and beautiful. What made you first come and see me? Um, I've been thinking about this for a while, but the reason why I wanted to do it is because I've always been really petite and small and I just feel like sometimes when I look in the mirror it's just straight up and down. I need some sort of curvature and I just feel like shirts don't fit the right way. They fit here, but they don't fit here. And I just, I just need a change. What's critical to understand is when you see these two implants, they're the same volume. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they both are 300 cc implants, but the difference is this one's higher. It has more projection. Mm -hmm. And why is that? Basically in someone like you, who's more petite, with a narrower base width, we still want to maintain enough volume to achieve the results that we want, but we have to go with a narrower implant to give you an appropriate size so that it's not too wide, mm -hmm. nor is it too narrow. So once we have chosen appropriate volume, we will choose a higher, more projected implant mm -hmm. to get the desired size that we want. All right, so we're here. We're about to start our operation. Um, Alexa's really excited, and then we're really excited for her because, you know, she works really hard. She diets, she exercises, and she just really feels like her body is not in proportion. Um, her top half doesn't match the bottom half, and she really feels like she wants to get a lot more improvement when she wears clothing. Um, and bathing suits and tighter clothes. So we're really happy for her, really excited for her, and she's gonna have wonderful results. So this is where we scrub, and this is my time where I basically get zen and focused, and I really like this time um, to where I can really kind of think about the case and get ready for surgery. All right, so we're here in the operating room, and this is where we're all set up. This is obviously the instruments, everything we're gonna be doing. And the patient has been prepped and draped sterilely. Um, we've obviously covered up her nipple and earlier complex for privacy and for uh, a little more modesty. Uh, we've made our markings preoperatively, again, to denote her inframammary folds, her inframammary incisions. We also noted that her left inframammary fold was a little bit higher than the right. Uh, we've also marked the uh, borders of the medial aspects of the breast. So now we're gonna start. So we're gonna start by injecting a little bit of local anesthesia, which is gonna make her a lot more comfortable postoperatively. Now we're about to make the incision. We put a silicone sizer in to really see how our pocket is shaped We've tailor tacked the incision, and we're gonna sit her up to really see if we have nice contour, if our pocket needs any more manipulation, if we like the size, et cetera. All right, so we have the patient set up, and you can see we have a sizer in on this side and no implant in on this side. And she has really pretty breasts to start. She has nice shape, she has well-defined inframammary folds, but you can see that with the implant on this side, she has nice upper pole fullness. She just has a little more volume. We've stayed with our hand and glove dissection and she's really gonna fill out clothes, bathing suits, and she's gonna be a lot more proportionate so that the curves of her upper body are gonna match the curves of her lower body. The sizes are in, the pockets are dissected, and she really has a very pretty result. She has nice upper pole fullness. She has nice lateral pole fullness. She has nice symmetry. I love the implant size. I think it really fits her body nicely. Uh, it's not too big, it's not too small. It really fits her chest wall really well. Gets her to the desired shape that she's looking for. And I think she looks very pretty. So basically, our pockets are dissected and we're ready to put the implants in. And we like to use a no-touch technique. So first we change our gloves so we have fresh gloves. Uh, and then we're going to use what's called a Keller funnel 
to really get the implant into the pocket without it touching any of the skin or any other surfaces. So it literally goes from the uh, packaging, which it's uh, prepared in, sterile, into the body. So we're done with surgery, she's gonna wake up. She'll go to her recovery room for about 30 to 45 minutes. She'll go home and she'll really be fine tonight. Next couple of days, she'll be a little more ginger than usual. Uh, but by one to two weeks, she can return to work, and by six weeks, she can resume all activity, exercise, the gym, whatever she wants. That's a wrap. It is day one after my surgery, and I'm feeling good, a little sore, but honestly, I thought it would be worse. All right, so we're here with Alexa, and she did fantastic. She's one day after surgery, and we're going to take a look for the first time. All right, so everything looks fantastic. They really look... Perfect and beautiful. Take a look. Oh my gosh. I can't believe it. They look amazing. They're perfect. They, they are, are absolutely perfect. They are wonderful. The size is magnificent. It totally fits your body perfectly. Unbelievable. And then all. <laughs> the shape and really, and what we were talking about beforehand, about how it really kind of accentuating your curves. So now you were unhappy that the top didn't really match the bottom. Right. Now they really do. So it is day three after my surgery. I am finally moving around, feeling good. So, um, today is day six after my surgery and I actually to go get my hair done. And I took a photo and I'm moving fast and faster and faster and things are going well. All right, Alexa, so we're one week out from surgery and how are we feeling? Amazing, I'm moving around, everything feels good. I'm not really sore anymore. I'm so happy. Today is day nine after my surgery and I'm feeling fantabulous. I'm so happy. I actually took a few photos yesterday. Don't kill me, doctor. Rock star patient. Absolutely Thank amazing. You. You're a month out from surgery, you did great, you feel great. Yep. But I wanted, I was thinking about it today, and what people really want to know is, you know, you as a model, mm -hmm. as a very beautiful person, everyone I'm sure says to you, oh, you don't need to do anything. You're beautiful. Don't touch anything. Everything's great. Right. It happens. Yeah, it happens. Unfortunately. Yeah, it does. But <laughs> what I think is an amazing, beautiful thing is that you had something that you were a little self-conscious about. Right. You didn't really like it, and we were able to do something about it and fix it. Absolutely. And seeing in your post, you seem to really be enjoying oh, yeah. your new body. I'm I mean, very happy. something so trivial as trying on bathing suits or bras or mm -hmm. tightening clothes really is a fun experience now. It's been very exciting for me. I'm so happy and trying on clothes has been absolutely amazing. So excited. Fantastic. Such a good experience and best decision I've ever made. So, yeah. You've been a pleasure.